I have to just start off the interview with uh, congratulations on another solid record. Oh, thank you. And how would you compare uh, the Venus Three working with this band uh, in, in comparison with the Egyptians or the Soft Boys? Uh, I suppose the obvious, the obvious thing you could, to say is that is that Bill, Scott, and Peter are American or from the Northwest. Um, and I think they're probably much more of, a, of an unashamed rock band. I think, in general, and this is no disrespect to the, the Morris and Andy and, and Kim and the, the various people who were in the Soft Boys and Egyptians, but um, Americans are much happier about rocking. I think the British kind of only really rocked, ironically, um, post New Wave. Although probably Kimberly Rue, to his credit, never rocked. Ironically, I think he just rocked. But, but um, I suppose this is just much more of an unabashed rock band. You know, it's a funny thing to be playing in my mid fifties. There I am, shaking my senile booty, and you know, <laughs> hoping that my um, hip bones will stay connected to my thigh bones. And yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I'd read that. Uh... You had attempted to boogie on stage, and uh, <laughs> you know things didn't quite turn out the way you'd hoped. Oh uh, well, no, I was. It was just a couple of years. I think it was like the first, the first tour we did in the states. I was still loosening my my spine a bit, and I think I got to Detroit, which is a, a rock ass town. Um, you know, even for me and my audience. And um, then, and, and I think I, I then we went to Toronto or the other. Anyway, whatever it was, I I went back on stage and, and my, my back was beginning to go, but I just sort of forgot about it with the endorphins of <laughs> of being on stage. And um, fortunately, you no, know, we were in we got to we were in, heading for Pittsburgh, and there's a great chiropractor in Pittsburgh who's sort of built like a buffalo, and he just puts you in this steel sarcophagus and slams into you. It only costs 30 bucks. <laughs> so I often put Pittsburgh in the middle of a tour now, just in case. I saw him again last November. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, we're definitely getting better at it. You know, it, it it's just a, a learning process. It's, you know, you, figuring you, you, out how to do this stuff after 35 <laughs> years. You're having the same unconscious reaction that uh, Elvis Presley did then, uh. Well, his, yeah, I mean, I don't think his hips became dislocated, but <laughs> but America's hips did. Right. <laughs> when you're working with uh, a band like the Venus Three, does it does it change your songwriting at all? Because obviously, you you put out records on your own, and you've put out some fine acoustic records uh, just on your own. But do you ever approach a song and say this would be fun for the guys to do? Does it change the way you write songs? Not consciously, but that wouldn't mean it, it doesn't affect it unconsciously i think we we've played a lot of songs together you know peter has been playing with me on and off or not, i've been playing with him on and off since 1985 um so in some ways peter's one of my oldest bandmates and I, so i think we inst we very instinctively know how to play guitar with and around each other um and bill and scott have been playing with peter and with me for quite a while you know it it there's it, not a lot of not a lot of thought goes into it really <laughs> well you know the interesting thing is because uh, your your past couple of records have been on yep rock and they're also re-releasing your older material yeah yeah o almost at the same time well that's because the old deals are up and those old records have been out of print mm -hmm. and also who knows for how long people will want to release physical product I mean some of these records it's now their fourth time around in terms of being released um, I don't know whether they're going to come out physically ever again you know but, but because of the way these deals are done um you know, with, with independent labels, mm -hmm. I own the rights, or, or we own the rights, and then they're, they're they're licensed to different labels, which we may not be there in another seven years' time. Right. You know, the the, the Rhino records that we leased 
stuff to 12 or 13 years ago is probably has no relation of whoever Rhino is now. Um, the labels that we licensed to in the 80s are all long gone. Uh, so you have to keep putting, you know, in order for them to stay in print, you have to keep relicensing. So, you know, we have a good working relationship with Yetbrock, Touchwood, you know, they're, they're mm-hmm. just, they have their own distribution. Um, and so we're putting out the new records through Yetbrock and, and also the old the old ones, but there isn't any kind of... Again, you know, there's there's no thought going into this. It's not like, well, they'd better hear the old stuff as well as the new stuff. You know, it's just, it's, it's all just as it happens, really. You know, in listening to, uh, you know, your older records and your newer records, and this might just be projection on my part, but there seems to have been a kind of restlessness to your early stuff that has become, I, I don't know, your, your, your new music is, is a little more comfortable. Does that make any sense at all? Yeah, it should do. I mean, I'm 56, so you'd expect me to have gotten a bit more comfortable, if not complacent. I mean, you know, if I was a horse, I would be put out to pasture now. They'd be looking at me and thinking, "Mm, should we make him into salami or should we just sit there and do oil paintings of him? You know, I wonder if he's capable of being put out to stud. Uh, It's that stage where you're not going to be coming up with you know agonizingly intense art of any kind really you're you're expected to mellow out um i mean i could see this coming when i started you know nearly 40 years ago when i first started writing songs i thought oh god i suppose i'm just going to get older and mellow out you know it's it's what happens i mean i hope my stuff isn't too bland um you get more subtle you probably get a bit deeper um you gain things and you lose things. Well, I, I don't. Th- I don't think anyone would ever accuse your your music of being bland. That's for sure. But um, I, I, w- I was saying that maybe something along the lines of "I'm falling" or "What you is the the first track on the record is the sort of stuff that you might not have been capable of writing twenty five years ago. No, no, and I might not have wanted to write twenty five years ago either. But I suppose that's one of the great things about getting older or, or getting younger, if you want to reverse the film. Uh, that you do different things at 30 from what you do at 50. Uh, you, you know, maturing doesn't mean that you're better. It just means that you're more mature. And I suppose your work has a different flavor. And maybe in years to come, people will pick different aspects of your work depending on what they're in the mood for. You know, if they want something snappy to wake them up, they might listen to something I did when I was under 35. <laughs> If they want something reflective or, you know, like The Tempest or whatever, they they pick up, pick something later. I mean, um, I mean, the, you just have to, you, you have to accept it. You, you, that Zen thing, you know, you, you need to fight age in some respects. Uh, you know, you don't want to embrace it and just lie down and, and ask for the, somebody to, you know, so grass over your still breathing corpse or whatever. But at the same time, um, you, you you don't want to just necessarily dye your hair, squeeze into a corset and pretend that you're 25. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that just makes you look older and sadder. And, I mean, Bob Dylan's always interesting on this because he has so totally let himself go with time. He makes no attempt to at sounding or feeling like he did when he was younger. You know, he almost bears no relation to what he was. Uh, and at the same token, by the same token, that, that kind of proves that it is him because because he, at his best, he's always moved with himself. There's been no attempt to recapture anything. And, um, you know, he's lost a tremendous amount. He, he's not what he was at all, but there's... He's still tr- very, very soulful. You know, he just digs down deep emotionally to places that that other people don't reach. And and I suppose that's for me it, that. And you know, I followed Dylan into this business when I was fifteen. That's why I decided mm-hmm. I wanted to write songs. You know, I wanted to write Million Dollar Bash or Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowlands or Visions of Johanna and. and um, so instead I wrote whatever it was I did write, you know, Where Are the Prawns and 
my wife and my dead wife and Perspex Island or whatever. But but you know, you just hope that whatever you do, your compass is flickering towards towards soul and that that there's some feeling in it. So um, I don't know. I, I just I hope that's the case. <laughs> 